Proposal poetry. That's so hard. That is so hard. I feel like I'm not speaking for anybody. I feel like I'm just speaking about my experience as, you know, a 20 year old person living in London, but it's definitely a, a positive thing. You know, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Someone who hasn't heard the record, I would say that it's a mixture of indie, soul and pop. I would say it's quite a sensitive album. It's quite introspective. It's, it's based in poetry and storytelling. Um, but I'd like to think that it's also quite a fluid album in terms of genre and it goes to a lot of different places. Hey. writing when I was probably about seven or eight. I've kept a journal since the age of 13, I think, um, up till now. And a lot of the record was actually based on, you know, going through those journals and finding the stories and the conversations that shaped me and being inspired by those stories. Where I live is kind of a little bit out of the way. It's quite suburban and there's not really that much going on. And I think in a way that sense of boredom or that sense of wanting to go somewhere exciting, that's what sparked my love of, of telling stories and of reading and of trying to create these different worlds. I've always just been very moved by music just as a music lover. Whenever I make a song, whenever I'm playing guitar, I just have this sense of being at home. Um, and I guess that's, that's all there is to it. Suddenly he started screaming. Yeah, my uncle kind of gave me his record collection um, because, you know, he had like hundreds of records and I just picked up as many as I could carry when I was 13 and whilst we were driving back kind of um, to London from, from the south of France. I mean, I was listening to the Arctic Monkeys a lot. I was listening to Bob Dylan. I discovered Tracy Chapman's first record. I was listening to Sade. I also discovered like hip hop, so like, you know, Illimatic by Nas. Um, Earth, Wind and Fire, Sister Sledge. Because my mum's a big fan of like kind of 80s, you know, she loves Prince uh, and loves all those kind of 80s disco artists that made their way across the ocean because she grew up in, in Paris. I think it was actually a school talent show. Like we had this kind of talent show that we did. I think I was 16 or so. Um, and I just kind of played my little garage band beats like out of my computer. And I think I also did a cover of like Redbone by Childish Gambino, which was quite ambitious. Um, but I remember that feeling of, you know, being in front of people and having like sharing my music in a public way. I'll always remember the way that that felt. Writing and singing are definitely very cathartic. Whenever anything happens, especially if it's negative, I always find myself, you know, reaching for the guitar or singing about it or writing a poem about it. I think there's something about putting a bit of space between you and the thing and trying to mold it and understand it and dissect it that makes me feel like I've processed the event itself. Maybe Joan Didion, I think. Because I'm, I mean, I'm reading The Year of Magical Thinking. Every time it's like, whichever book I'm reading at that time that's really gripping me, um, that becomes my favorite. Film and photography are big ones for me. There's this photographer called Wolfgang Tillmans, and I love the way that he kind of documents youth culture and queer culture in London and Berlin. Um, and directors like Xavier Dolan, Wes Anderson, Edward Yang, all these people who have very specific visual aesthetics always really inspire me, whether it's the way that they use color, whether it's the cinematography, because I look at my work as almost being like, you know, you're like, you're taking a snapshot almost as if it, you're like looking at an old Polaroid or you're watching a kind of old home movie. That's how I try and approach my work.
When it comes to my favorite poets, what I like is their sense of freedom. Because when I was learning about poetry at school, there was definitely more of an idea of structure and, and rhythm and form. And whilst that's something that, you know, has, has its own use and, and benefits, I was always somebody who gravitated to more free forms of expression. And when I read poems like Howl by Allen Ginsberg or Wild Geese by Mary Oliver, it seemed like it was just almost flooding out of them in a way that was unconstrained and exciting. Prose or poetry? That's so hard, that is so hard. I think for me, okay, I prefer writing poetry for me, but I, I prefer consuming prose. So if I had to pick, it would be both, in different ways. <laughs> I miss playing live so much because there's this, you can't emulate having people in front of you experiencing the music alongside you. So I just hope that when shows come back, it will be even more special. <laughs>